All right. All right, we're live. Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thanks for all the people that are joining us on Zoom, and we appreciate all the people who are watching us on the replay on YouTube. Um, it's another fabulous, well, let's put it this way. It's better to be here with the rain than in most mm -hmm. other parts of the country. Right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we'll take it. Southern California, it's, uh, you're going to win that bet most of the time. So uh, our guest this morning is uh, a speaker who's been with us before, Dr. Brian Garrett. Uh, this is basically part two of his presentation from, uh, from well, I'd say last year, but it was just a few so weeks ago, um, on uh, Shrek Manning. So um, the doc's going to walk us through some wonderful stuff here. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and uh, you have time to play, get a plate and uh, partake of the presentation. So I'm going to open up some prayer and let's get the doctor to get with so. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another wonderful day of life, life more abundantly. We thank you for allowing us to, to brave the weather um, safely, Father, to get here so we can not only learn, we glean from the wisdom that Dr. Garrett is going to share with us, but also so that we can be in your house of worship and come together as fellow believers and sing praises to your name and learn from uh, whatever Pastor McGarity has to share with us this week, Father. We thank you, Father, for all that you do for us, Father, the big things, the little things, things that we give you gratitude for, the things that we forget, Father. But know that you're behind it all. We bless you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Great. Anyway, that's great to be here again. Um, my name is Brian Garrett. I'm a chiropractor and a fourth kinesiologist. We did a little uh, presentation about stress before, and I'm going to continue it because I think I left you with all, all the problems and notes we have. <laughs> So this is like the practical solution. I'm going to go back to for a reminder that you cannot not have stress. And you need stress because if you didn't have gravitational stress, people and astronauts get osteoporosis in two weeks in space if they don't do something. So right now I think they have some exercise things they can do. So uh, so uh, this is also modeled after someone, uh, Anne Selye, who is a medical doctor from McGill University in Canada, and it seems like people pretend like he doesn't exist anymore, but I think of him as the father of stress because he found out that there were three stages of stress, alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. And there were three hormones or three systems that got messed up with stress, digestion, people get ulcered, um, hormones that go out of balance hormone-wise, and um, research. Yeah. Digestion hormones and immune system, so people have compromised immunity. So uh, let's see how that goes. Okay, so um, here this is just out of current uh, psychiatry, and uh, there's extensive literature on the association of mental health diagnosis with diabetes outcomes, especially for depression. So it's bad to be depressed. Oh, uh, oh yes. I, it's bad to be depressed. Now, one of the uh, techniques that I do is a, a thing called neuroemotional technique. And it just is just through with functional MRI that they can change the size of the amygdala with the technique. And we might do that at the end. So I'll take questions at the end. I just want to kind of uh, blow through all the slides. But essentially, stress is bad for diabetes. Yeah. Also, stress is bad for the heart. Because of psychosocial factors. Remember, they put us all in our little areas where the COVID families are breaking down, people are breaking down relationships. What is it? At least 50 or 60 percent divorce rates. And what's the effect of that on kids? So. But I do love this. I mean, or it's a great a brain model made of hands that we need each other, you know. And so there's a lot of different help out there. But I think the real truth is one-on-one -on -one and in churches and different social organizations. We need socialization with those around us. It's good for our health. And some things that are bad for you, I think last time we talked about this, purportedly we need about a, a, a credit card of plastic every month in the standard American diet. <laughs> Last 
number one source is wow. drinking water because uh, those bottles are plastic and the, the sun goes through it and brings the plastic into the, to the bottle. Um, we use, I think, is it a billion tons of pesticides on our food every year? And in fact, yeah. well, make your money. So also, I, I read a book a long time ago about empty harvest, and when he talked about that they scrape out the fungus in the soil and then they put petrochemical uh, fertilizer in there. So you're not going to get rid of oil unless you want to get rid of food. But, uh, you know, it's not good for your health. Oh, also, I want to go back. There was a movie, uh, America the Beautiful, that talked about beauty care items and how you get phthalates from makeup and stuff. So you should make sure it's clean. It's more, hard. now it's harder. So these were the books written by uh, Dr. Sellier. The first one was The Stress of Life, and the second one was Stress Without the Stress. So I like that idea because, again, you can't escape stress. And you can, you know, like working out is a stress because you're breaking down the muscles and it's going to rebuild to be strong for the next event. But the number one thing they talked about was egotistic altruism. That you take care of yourself in a way that takes care of other people. It's got to be win-win. And, and Covey's uh, Seven Habits, he talked about that. It's got to be win-win or no deal. Um, so yeah, when you're egotism, it's bad for your social self. And when you're altruistic, it omits you know, you know, your personal needs. So you're, both of those are necessary. So you've got to win meet here in the middle. Egotistic altruism. Help others in a way that you get help as well. Win-win or no deal. Is that what okay. So that's Dr. Uh, Sellier. And he said, it's not the stress that kills it, the reaction to it. So we go into fight or flight. We get our hormones going. And over time, I think later we'll talk about cortisol. So it's a, a battle of the brain because this is the newer part of the brain and this is the older automatic part of the brain. And so when you're in fight or flight, the older system goes and you, know, you lose rationality. And some people are stuck in that position. So the biggest thing is, you know, if you have bad sleep, if you're emotionally distressed, if you eat poorly, it increases glucocorticoids which is uh, cortisol, and I think I have a slide coming up about that. But if there's a whole cycle of it that impaired regulation of cortisol, impaired hippocampal memory function, and increased risk of Alzheimer's. So cortisol is bad for you. Some is good, you need it, you need stress, you need some cortisol. But if you get too much, you get high blood pressure, high sugar, digestive, nerve problems, Depression, weakened immune system, and heart disease. And today, hopefully, we'll do a little demo on the energy adrenals because people become adrenal fight or flight and they never go back. If you have an emergency, yeah, you're going to have to take care of that and thank God the body does, but you want to go back. And a lot of people kind of live in a very stressed way. So these are the adrenal glands that are on the top of the kidney. They put out cortisol. But again, that. So, <clears throat> Jefferson said, walking is your best possible exercise. Habituate yourself to walk very fast. And that was interesting that he said that because I'm not a man. It's like, yeah, this is gate speed and survival. So, if walking is great, two miles a day, but uh, it's better to do it fast. Because here they said uh, the slow gate of a 45 year old could be a sign of uh, accelerated aging. What's the definition of fast? Um, you know, when people shuffle. So, you know, you want to have a, a sense of purpose on moving. It's kind of like exercise. You know, it's probably, you know, again, he says it's the best exercise. And in stress, three systems get messed up the immune system, the hormone system, and the digestive system. Most commonly, people know about ulcers or, you know, irritable bowel syndrome. So there's a bunch of things you can do, therapy, go to the spa, exercise, hobby, meditation, yoga, nature, time management, music. So everybody has to find their way to mitigate stress. I wish I could say this is it. But hopefully later in the, in, in the demo, we'll do a demo on somebody for stress. I'm uh, here just talking about the microplastics in the food chain. 
and water being the number one offender. So our food, food should be our medicine, and our medicine should be our food, the house of food. One billion tons of pesticides. And I'm so sick, I'm like, it says organic, is that true? Has it, have they been sued? I mean, that's how we have to get justice in America, is to find out. Anyone can say anything, right? So uh, this was a, a good thing about the mind-body stress reaction at work. I and mean, they found out that people who did had good uh, sleep quality, there's a thing called heart rate variability. And I'm gonna say I'm a blue belt in heart rate variability. I don't know it enough. I do measure it on myself, but it has to do with how much sympathetic fight or flight and how much relaxation and how they are in balance with each other while you're at rest. But they found that this was good for employees and for a better uh, copacetic workplace to have a, a mind body stress reduction plan. And so, uh, he, Dr. Sayeri also said that the beginning of the disease process begins with optical distortion. So, and this is one of our original uh, uh, graphics we had in kinesiology because this is everybody to me when I look at them. If it's like this, I see this muscle's not right. But the number one thing is they use your ears to be over your shoulder to your ankle. Now, you don't have to be Herman Munster, I guess. <laughs> But some, you know, but I, that's why I don't talk about it in Mexico so either because then, then if I see him public, like, hey, no, how's my boss doing? So uh, people mean well, but when a cat get, gets scared, what does he do? When a human goes in stress, what does he do? He goes forward head posture, and that increases lung capacity and does a lot of other things. It's just ongoing. It's one of the things, I mean, that's why I say you don't have to go run a marathon, and that's part of. Some of our people go, oh my God, the stress, I gotta run a marathon, which could be a stress itself. You know, you gotta find a nice, easy thing that's that's reproducible, that's doable, you know. Oh, and this one's pretty interesting. So slump in an upright posture affects stress response, and it turned out that you have better self-esteem, ne uh, less negativity, uh, increased positive mood, and you help build the re resilience of stress just by sitting up straight at your desk. So just something to think about, a little mindfulness about posture and gait and stress, you know. And again, you don't have to get like me where, you know, my wife got some hope and I was like, couldn't read the label, I had to bring out my magnifier on my phone. You know, I don't trust. So poor posture can lead to spine damage, injury risk, pain, uh, low self-esteem, headaches, digestive problems, stress, premature aging, chronic illness, and, uh, Disability. So it kind of have to, I think, get something in your mind of how you want to be. You know, my dad was a beautiful person, but he smoked for 40 years. He was kind of depressed. Um, he thought that gambling was such a great thing. And uh, for me, I'm not into it, but you know, I'm going to live as long as I can, as healthy as I can. So this was from New England Journal of Medicine. They said it all, I'll just take it on each side. So this is the chances of cancer and sedentary. Guys not doing any that third will get cancer between 61 and 81. If they'll walk one mile a day, it goes down to 13%. And if they'll walk two miles a day, it'll go down to 5%. So all death from all diseases reduced by 50% if they just walk one mile a day. So pretty easy but hard to do. You gotta set a goal and measure it and write it down. So yeah, this is a popular. If you're in a good mood, go for a walk. If you're still in a, or if you're in a bad mood, go for a walk. If you're still in a bad mood, go for another walk. So, <laughs> there's nothing that. Yeah. And then this is uh, women, women and, and breast cancer. Uh, one in eight will get it if they'll do uh, three hours of exercise per week. It reduces the chance. By 30%, if they do four hours of exercise, it'll reduce the chances by 60%. And it doesn't have to be Olympic running or lifting. And that's part of the problem that, you know, I, mean, I go to CrossFit and we blow up a lot of people because everybody wants to go crazy and they're the biggest weights in their life. And they don't have the idea of longevity. So uh, where faith begins, anxiety ends. Where anxiety begins, 
and state in this. So we have to have faith. God made these bodies. The body that he the, the power that made the body heals the body. And it didn't jump out, it jumped out. Okay, you're bored, get out of there. It has an intelligence within. In fact, probably the truth is what percentage of our activity is conscious mind? Breathing, heartbeat, digestive, and thought it's all automatic. So I like to do a demonstration uh, on somebody here. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's scary. So I just had a question for so numbers are staggering about exercise and decrease of getting cancer. Can you explain why? Uh, I think that our physiology, or, or remember, we were walking around. I mean, I do like to park fly come up the stairs here, uh, but people like to park close. Uh, you know, America, you know, no insult. It's the sickest, fattest, most drugged out nation in the history of America. <laughs> We're number 43 in health. Down one spenders, four point something trillion dollars. So I think it's just, you know, I, I, I may write a book called Conspiracy Against the Americans or the World. Um, big corporations. I know. I tell you, uh, plus it's hard to do. I mean, what, per what percentage of 50 year olds and above are working on? No, I like that follow up. I think the question finds you so. What in walking, why does it directly correlate with reduction? I think it, it helps with the vagus nerve and the fight or flight. The vagus nerve is the relaxation system, and the fight or flight is the guy who's dominant now. So, prayer, meditation, easy exercise. That's why I don't have, I use my way. And I measure. And I, I measure heart rate variability. Let, let me repeat what I what I'm okay. hearing you say is that basically it reduces the homeostasis. You can reduce it that that level so that you're you're not in, in a stress situation. Yes. How do they know that back there though? Right. Hippocrates and uh, Thomas Jefferson, pretty smart guy. Uh, hold on. Anybody else? Um, yes, uh, you mentioned before about uh, about stress uh, when you lift weights. There's stress involved. Uh, what's the difference between stress that you don't have control over and the stress of something that you're doing that if it if it begins to tear you down. You can stop. That's beautiful. That that's exactly it, though. With stress in the weight room is tearing you down. You do your reps, and the body repairs itself over time. And you know, um, <clears throat> I almost want to call it like the stress that we get from. I I, I don't watch the news because I feel like I get shaking baby syndrome. <laughs> You know, and so I don't know if it's designed to scare you. I like to have them scientifically evaluated. I don't know, but I don't, it's bad for me. You know, but studies and they actually show that the news is actually negative. Yeah, but I had the essential negative. I heard they can't sell positive news, but when I see positive news, I start to cry about the beautiful people that are here and the people, beautiful people on the planet. You know, I mean, I think you know, Rodney King would write it, you know, when. Why can't we just get along? Yeah. yeah. Well, from a, a neuroscience digital marketing perspective, uh, we know that negative does more to stimulate response and engagement than positive does. That's why, um, you know, when, when clients are looking for, you know, that 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 juice to go viral, they're like, oh, what do I need to do? What do I do? Yeah, you can go entertain, you can go funny, you can go informative, but if you do something that kind of uh, or Lack of uh, a better word, uh, third to third, you know, they get people riled up. Um, that does, I mean, you do something controversial and, you know, people are just going to go on a tirade about it, like that'll get them reacting. But it's also why you get exponentially more people who are readily um, going to write a negative review about a business than a positive. That's again, clients always ask us, like, how do I get people to write good reviews? I get, you know, a lot of happy customers, you know, they love us, blah, blah, blah. It's like, right. It's a little harder to get somebody to do that than it is if somebody goes and has a bad experience. They're ready to go on the internet and just tear you new. So um, it's it's natural for that. So it's helped uh, that. 
key dots. Uh, great presentation. Yeah. I love those graphs, you know, yeah. uh, those illustrations uh, tell a story. Um, you know, when I was growing up, Doc, uh, there was uh, one supplement ever. You remember those one a day mm -hmm. uh, vitamin commercials? That was it. All there was out there. Get a couple of times. Today, the world is friendly by wellness, would you say? I mean, everybody's got a wellness program. Uh, what has changed in the last hundred years or so, would you say? And why are we still dying at a record pace with all these options? Well, I, you can't get mad at humans because, you know, I said I want to park up front and do a lot of walking. Um, I think it's partly like, remember back, I think it was in the 80s, money for nothing and chicks for free. You know, you have to pay the price for health. It's, you know, and organic costs more. You know, for me and my wife, we don't get um, prepared foods that much. We do it ourselves from raw sources just because I've turned into a little bit more paranoid. You know, I don't know. You know, and they say it's organic, and I'll believe them because that's my only option. Either that or I got to either that or I got to go out there and kill it myself. <laughs> Which I prefer for it to be in that nice little plastic. But I think it really is. Why is it changed? I think there's a change in uh, one. I think there's a level of blindness to what's really happening. You know, it's like and plus, you know, when I was a kid, there were only a few heavy kids, and now. You know, um, that's a pretty bad thing. I feel sorry for them. I, I think they need help because we should be eating whole food like God made for humans to eat. And um, and I know the World Economic Forum wants you to eat bugs and stop flying around in your jets. Uh, in your jets. And um, yeah. I was going to say the actual soil in there. It's depleted of all kind of nutrients and stuff. But they did it. No one, no one followed the rule of uh, rotating your crop so they didn't just keep growing. <laughs> if you remember, <laughs> they've done studies. There is uh, differences of food itself. The last thing I'd like to do is: Is there anyone here that stands up and gets dizzy? Or has their joints clicked? Or light light, a bright light irritates their eyes? Yeah. Okay. Would you mind coming up? So I just wanted to show just a small example of um, how stressed. Do you have any back pain or neck pain or anything like that? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see where she's at. Pull this here. And that's, uh, and that's good. So nice. Uh, pretty nice jump. For you. Huh? Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to do this and I'll do a muscle test on it. And then just put that one. And then I'm just going to stretch this lady. So, kind of an interesting thing. So, we found out, I don't know what year, I've been doing kinesiology since 1979, but at one year, we found out if you stretch a ligament and the muscle goes weak, it means that there's a stress response. So, she does have that. And so we found out that there's these two acupuncture points right at the bottom of the rib that you can just touch them with one hand. Uh, and I like to always say, once I found the weak muscle on one side, I only found the next side. So if you can just touch here like this, nope, there you go like that. Uh -huh. and push up. Now in her case, she goes weak when she touches it. So if you have an adrenal fatigue thing, I'm going to reset it, okay? And so I'm going to use the other arm. You like it when I pinch it? It goes no. And, and now I say, well, can I, can I sink it with an organ? It no. Can I make it a parasympathetic? Yeah. So I'm going to try this and then this. And it's so common because there's a thing called the ileocecal valve, which controls the digestive material from the small intestine into the large intestine. And uh, a lot of work that we've done on it, it hurts, is pretty simple. So I'm going to just have you come here and just pinch it. So we just synchronize the adrenal acupuncture points with the with the uh, with the organ. There we go. So now I'm going to go back and see if I can find that again. When we first started, it's strong now. But let's challenge it. Let's have a touch with her right here, like that. And it doesn't go weak now. 
And so we got it pretty good. It's pretty good. So to make my note, though, I give you the 3030 30 here to see the 30, 30, 30 seconds. <laughs> Because pretty clear, it can be uh, it can be a lot of other things. I just I, I'll just say this: I have it in the mind that every time we meet, they have the adrenal test, and he was telling me that his wife's coming in tomorrow for vertigo, and he has no symptoms of uh, any vestibular problem. But I fixed his vestibular thing, and the adrenal thing shut off. So hmm. how did that happen? Because uh, uh, it, it's a, it's like a program running under the scene. It's not causing symptoms, but it's causing stress in the system. So it's an underlying stress. So it's like this. You can live, if, if she were to walk around, and I could just hold her shoulder like this, and eventually, maybe after a month, I'll try to get it off of there. But if we have a stress system that can wear away as plus, bad air, bad water, bad food, pesticides, preservatives, remember the good old days, you used to drink from the hose. Oh, I love that. Yeah, you're talking about the two references on the I always put it in the head. So I have a nerve damage, I have a plate. Okay, and so you just told me why you had one. So we're going to go back to here. And I must not be as good one. And you remember when you had the accident? Yeah. Remember that? Just think about that accident. So she goes back in stress. So we use a phenomenon called the uh, tent that I learned from the crazy guy from Guadalajara. <laughs> when he showed it to me, I yelled at him over the phone. Because he was and I go, we don't do any property here, sir. Uh, but this is real. So uh, I guess who was it Carver? Yeah, it was all over the truck in my car. But I have memory of it. Because we put all the vitals and lights like it. And then I had to have like Five reconstructive surgeries. I've had a long history. I think I'm blessed with the stuff. Mm -hmm. But there is one thing I would like to fix on it. Maybe is there's a thing called the event. And when I saw it first, like I said, I rejected it. Now I think we're going to fix 10,000 files, or at least we fix five files. Yeah, because it's like I have, you know, I had such a severe impact from the roof because I rolled. Mm -hmm. The roof crushed in on me and it. Fractured my whole orbital. Oh, and, oh that's painful. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. 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 This is a wireless right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, here. Great, so stay right there. Straighten and push up that way. Okay, and that makes her strong. Do you remember the accident and all the problems that you had since? Yeah. Good. All right, come on, next. So we just told the brain about those files. Now remember, it's not a dumb brain. It's taking in three billion impulses per second. Thank God it's automatic. Probably 80 plus percent of the stuff that we do is that. So let's have you stand. And how did we find it? Oh, I think we found it with um, adrenal thinking about the accident, wasn't it? Or maybe just have her touch the adrenals but, and think about the accident. And think about the problems we have now. Think of all the things you had to do to get back to normal. So that would be at least the first phase of it, is to fix that. Because I actually know a lot of people, and I've seen people, I actually had someone two weeks ago where he had a, a, one accident 15 years ago, and then he had an accident, whatever, a month or two ago. And the accident 15 years ago was the event that was stopping him from getting better with the new accident. So the body holds memory. Can't get mad, you know, but I think we never did that before. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right, any questions? Okay, well, I really appreciate it. So you were talking about the brain earlier and how, you know, the old part versus the new part. But what if somebody only had half a brain or no brain at all? <laughs> Actually, I, I know it's intended a little bit as a joke, but there was a little girl who got half of her brain removed and she went back to pretty much normal. Uh -huh. we, we got a lot of um, plasticity built in. Uh, I mean, it's the greatest thing in the world. And that's why in some ways we got to preserve it. You know, and that's why to me, I don't really understand, you know, all the booze, all the sugar, all the smokies. I guess there's less smoking today, but you know, the vaping and all that stuff, you know, I think of all that as like suicide. Well, I do because those are the people that sit on their brains. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Thank you so much. Awesome. 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 Yeah, Dr. Garrett never disappoints. And um, he'll, uh, he'll send you an invoice for the work. That's <laughs> uh, always free. God gave us all for free. No, hey, uh, he's fantastic. And yeah, this is the kind of stuff that you know you're not gonna get pretty much anywhere else. You guys are getting you know firsthand information from the experts. Um, obviously for all the leaders here, so we all come from um, that same perspective when we're talking about our particular fields, information that we had um, we had Craig last week talking about cryptocurrency. Um, there's so much going on with that. Um, obviously, Dr. Garrett here talking about the stress management and the, you know, the, 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 the plethora of things that go on with, with the body that I mean, I, I, any of this stuff, you know. So I'm, I'm, I thank God that he has that particular specialty in that, in that field. So um, this is what we really hope to uh, expand upon as we continue going into the new year. We know a lot of people coming back from the holidays. Um, Mark, um, by the way, just let you guys know, so I, I actually had a chance to uh, dialogue with him. So uh, he didn't just break his foot, he broke his ankle. They actually had to, uh, I think they, had, they got to put uh, two or three pins in it now. So uh, he's convalescing at a facility over in the Golden Hills. So, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be weeks. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to see him for a while yet, but. Um, yeah, he uh, he took a tumble down down the stairs. So uh, when he was loading up the truck with uh, supplies, and things, he so. told me he was kicking the dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah, you guys can remember to keep Mark the Spark in your prayers. Um, he will be back with us as soon as he is able. Uh, but definitely, um, you know, our our our, our hearts and, and minds uh, are are with him in his convalescing. So. Um, Next week, I'm actually up to that. Right. Um, so I, I was kind of teetering on what I was going to do. I know we we have a lot uh, to communicate when it comes to artificial intelligence. Um, so what I'm going to do next week is try to pick up kind of where I, I roughly left off before. 
and see if I can get you guys like some some actual demonstrations, and then I'll take some um, input from the crowd on what you would like for me to show you what it can do. Now, I do want to kind of do a quick review of like what we talked about in the past, real quick, and then just jump right into it. I will ask though next week if you guys can try to hold back your questions but let me kind of get through the demonstration because it will, it will allow for us to get a little bit into the weeds a little bit more. Um, and we've been able to do it. No, exactly like that. No, I'm not gonna do that. No. So, uh, so next week it will be about artificial intelligence. So this is uh, Rise of the Machines Part Four, I believe. Um, I anyway, it's it's it's. It was a snappy file. I have this somebody else handled it. So, uh, so um, artificial intelligence. Um, I know you guys all heard of Chat GPT, you know, probably Bard and Quad and all these other things. Um, I my goal is to kind of give you guys um, a, a, a baseline by which you can kind of lift from and to do some things that you're doing in your personal lives and your business lives with. Just know that artificial intelligence is here to stay, much like cryptocurrency, it ain't going nowhere. It's just going to keep leveling up. And if you guys are not taking advantage of it yet, if you're not getting your heads wrapped around it yet, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. Much like the pandemic when it first came out, and every single person in this room rolled it up, remember, the day before the day, okay? Do we decimal system at the library? Pagers, if you were lucky. Uh, of course, if you were Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell, you have, you know, the mobile phone. <laughs> so, um, we, we all have to really get deep in dealing with AI and how to apply it to our daily lives because it's, it's getting deep. Whether you want to deal with it or not, it, it's irrelevant. It is here. Um, and you don't want to be like folks now. They're literally people out there now can't send an email. Barely can send a text. Got a smartphone. Barely can send a text. Email. Like you can't be that guy. You're going to get left behind in your personal and professional life. So um, next week, we're going to hopefully dive into a little bit more of that and give you guys some practical applications of it. In that kind of so Think of some stuff, come with your questions. Um, after I show you some baseline stuff, go and ask me, we'll see what uh, what the AI can split out. So um, so I'm just gonna put this out in prayer real quick, and then, uh, well, it's are gonna put up, I was gonna say, grab a plate, it's, yeah, it's gone. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, definitely network, um, fellowship, and, and that kind of thing before uh, sort of starts here a little bit. So thank you, Heavenly Father, for another wonderful presentation. And we thank you, Father, that you were able to fellowship, come together as a group and a, and a growing group. And for all the people that are watching online and watching the replay, Father, we ask that you bless them, bless us all as we go about our week this week, Father. It's going to be whatever you want it to be, Father. We just pray that we are in tune with the divine frequency of your will and that we are in the right place at the right time, saying the right things to the right people to elicit the right response, which is your perfect will. We bless you. We love you. We honor you. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.